Could this be your next budget gun? Good first purchase? We're gonna find out in this episode of Airsoftology Reviews. That's right, here are my hands. Could be your next entry-level gun. There's a few on the market right now. In fact, there's a lot of entry-level guns on the market and they are hit or miss. Some are fantastic. There's some great brands out there and then some, when you get to this price point, price point gun, the affordable line, uh, can be a little bit on the miss side. I've seen some that really miss the mark in this price range. So the question is, what I'm holding in my hand, is this a good one or one that you might want to pass on? We're going to find out, but let's start with the externals first. And there's a few surprises here. All right, externally, we are looking at a full polymer build, which is what you're going to normally find around this price of gun. Nothing wrong with it. Polymer has come a long way in the past few years, and some companies are doing a very good job taking that polymer and building it. And you know what? This one is one of them. In fact, if you look at the rail, the first thing I noticed when I picked this up is the fact that you can actually see the nylon fiber inside. That's that's kind of my tell. It's like, okay, is this going to be good quality or not? And when you pick it up and you see kind of that, that look, kind of that wavy kind of look inside of it, you know they're actually putting some really good plastic behind this. So like I said, this thing is plastic front, middle, and back when it comes to parts. In fact, I'll even show you what's metal. Sling attachment point, which is actually super rare to find on a gun up this price point. The buffer tube, the fire selector here, the magazine release here, the trigger, the charging handle, and that is about it. Everything else is going to be polymer on here except for a few little nuts and bolts. But like I said, don't let that think there's something wrong with the gun. Like I said, it lends to a lightweight build. So if you are a younger player, someone who plays a lot of CQB or plays long games, maybe not quite fully grown yet, that makes for a very lightweight gun. This thing is probably one of the lighter guns I've used. Very easy. You can see how quick I can move it left to right. Also on the battlefield for any player, that means really quick target acquisition. You're not moving a big hunk of metal, large mass here at the end. Um, moving on to the rail though, I do want to talk about this. I mentioned it earlier. This is actually a really cool design rail for a polymer build. Uh, it uses the modern connection point down here, the two screws to lock it around kind of the attachment point, the delta ring as it mates into the body. He's got a nice big Picatinny, uh, official spec Picatinny rail here, not some weird off spec. This is actually true to spec, which is, again, surprising to find on a rail and a gun in this price point. And a top one. The top one matches up perfectly with the rest of the rail system, so you can run lights, laser, optics, whatever you want. You do get on here flip up front and rear sight. And surprisingly enough, too, an adjustable aperture on the back. Again, some surprises here with it. And these are the kind that don't just knock down. Usually at this level, you're going to get the cheap ones that just kind of bump and, and drop down. You actually have to press the button on these to lower them. And it's a pretty stiff button, too, so it's not something you're accidentally going to press and bump on the battlefield. Again, another nice touch and surprising to see. Moving on to the body, I do have the tan version here. It comes in four different flavors, uh, no matter where you're gonna pick this up, UK, Germany, or the United States. The two different flavors are the tan body for kind of this two-tone cool look, or you can go all black. It comes in two lengths here. We have this version, which is the 10 and a half inch version, and then you have another version, which is the 14 and a half inch standard length version as well. So if you guys wanna play indoor and out, we'll talk about the differences in power when we get to the chrono, because there is a little bit of difference there too. It's not just looks on that, but we're still talking externals here, and there's a few more surprises under the hood. Moving on down, you get a really nice comfortable grip here. It is ambi. It's not uh, usually some of these contoured grips like this end up being set up for righties only. This is actually comfortable left and right. It's equally designed and very good on the hands. It's kind of got a fat feel, but not too fat. So if your hands are not quite the biggest, you're not going to have a problem getting a hold of this and holding on to it. It doesn't also feel very small in the hand either, which is good. It gives you a real nice positive grip. Trigger is your standard curve size. You do, like I said, magazine release is nice. Magazine fits in here nice and tight and not too tight though, good balance. You do get a polymer magazine, a mid cap of 200 rounds, which is an insane amount of rounds for a polymer mid cap. And of course that cool standard styling that everyone loves. Moving on to the back, crane style stock. It's the big kind, which is good, which means you can put large batteries in it. You can pop the back rubber pad off here, put batteries down both sides of the tube, and there's plenty of room down in the buffer tube as well. So all three of those are gonna lend to, you can run the three part lipos. If you wanna put a lipo in here, you can run a big fat double nine six. You can run the fat 
stick type lipos for a two part if you want to do a 7.4. You have all the, or 7.2, you have all the options for batteries in this gun uh, because of the stock. Some of them do limit. This one is that tried and true tested. You do get a rubber butt plate on the back, not just plastic back here. So it's nice and grippy. It's going to stick where it goes. No corners cut there as well. You do have the attachment points, some sling points here. But again, you're not going to probably need those because this does come with a sling plate. Again, very surprising to get a metal sling plate on a gun at this price point. Usually that is missing. That's something you don't find on here because they're usually trying to cut costs, just like the flip up front and rear sights, something you're not going to normally see. Rounding out all the externals, uh, the flash hider in this, this is a European version, so you're going to see a black tip. US version, you're going to get an orange tip. It is 14 millimeter counterclockwise, but be mindful. I want to give you a heads up on this. We are talking about a polymer barrel and a polymer flash hider. So for those of you who are looking to pop this thing off, which again, from a safety standpoint, it's up to you to so be mindful because it's polymer to polymer, because it's going to be glued in here, chances are you're not going to get um, the opportunity to do that because of the way it is, unlike a metal barrel with that. So just keep in mind, that's something to think about. Nothing wrong with that, totally fine. Again, but just be mindful, there is plastic on plastic glued, so not something you'll be able to take off very easily. And rounding out the externals are the markings. It is a Tipman Tactical. This is their commando line, so we've got that nice embossed part here. Kind of looks a little shiny to contrast the matte finish of the body, and everything does have a matte finish to it, so it's not all shiny or whatever. Tipman Tactical, Fort Wayne, Indiana. The required warning, which you're going to find on any U.S. manufactured gun, serial number, and GI Sport 6mm Commando. This one does have the German markings on it, so uh, it will be a little different than the U.S. version or the U.K. version depending on where you're picking this up. All right, done with externals. Now it's internal time. And this is where the surprises continue for something around this price that would be very much considered an entry-level gun. First off, your inner barrel is like crater cut. It's actually beveled toward the end. It is impressive that that's included. And then, of course, when you look on down to the barrel, you kind of go down here and hiding behind this little door is the rotary style hop up with the metal mech box. Again, we're not talking about a plastic mech box. Those don't exist. People don't make those anymore, especially in a quality gun. Uh, you have a full metal mech box, full metal build internally, all the goody parts you're going to need for a solid build here. And that rotary style hop up, which I love and not something you see at this price. I know I keep saying that throughout this video. I think that's my biggest surprise when I have my hands on a product like this. I have a certain expectation of what I'm going to find when I get a hold of this and start looking. And when I start finding different things, things that you normally find at that next level up, it's always kind of a happy moment for me. So you're getting quite a bit under the hood for what you're paying for. All right, taking it to the Chrono, two different versions. I'm going to show you the long version here on the Chrono. It's around 115 meters a second, 114 floating around there. So you're going to be seeing something very comfortable in the high 300 feet per second on conversion. Definitely a fuel gun. And that's for the long version of this. The shorter version of the gun, you're going to find something right around that 350 feet per second mark, which is going to make it good to use at indoor fields. So the short one set up for indoor. The long one is set up for outdoor. So definitely you want to pick the one that fits where you play the most. If you play both, I'd say pick the short one and you always are good no matter where you go. If you decide to go play indoors, you don't have to worry about the power change. Because it does have a standard mech box, this price point, you're not going to really find a quick change spring system uh, just because of the extra cost of making it. Um, it's something that's going to be a little more work to make the change, but again, it's a standard version 2 mech box. It takes all the parts and it has pretty decent parts inside, so you can make that spring change if you do want to turn the short one up a little harder to get it close to 400 just because you like the style. Alright, that's it. That's the full rundown of all the details on the Tipman Tactical Commando, brand new on the market at the time of this video. And I want to know your guys' thought. Do you think this is a contender for a the next budget blaster, the next gun to get you started, the loner to give your friends, or if you're an experienced player, like I said, like just have this around as a backup gun uh, because of the price on this. I want to know. Let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you guys want to know all the pricing and all the good details on that, like always, I've got a link in the description below so you can click it and check it out. Well, that's it again. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, go out, play some airsoft, have some fun. But no matter what you do, call your freaking hits.